Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome to a new Wargame Red Dragon video. This is going to be a slightly different sort of video, as I'm recording this one live. I am streaming currently, and that means that there might be people who join the stream, and that you might see some chat messages eventually. Now, this is a bit of exp an experiment. Um, let me know if you like it or not, and I'll adjust as I see fit. Anyway, Today's video is sent in by Afro Mentioned, also known as Moist Leopard. He's doing a 1v1 ranked. Now, it's been ages since I covered one of those, so let's have a look at how he's going to be playing this game. I have played some ranked, but that was at least two years ago, and I just utterly sucked at it. So let's see what I can pick up from uh, Afro Mentioned here. He's using an Entente Unspecialized deck, so just an Entente General. And we're on the map Punch Bowl. Which I'd say for two players is, or sorry, for yeah, for two players, so one on each side, is a lot of terrain to cover, and we'll just have to see how that exactly is going to go down. Um, we got OT tabs, Spat BOV thirty, Tetra one four eight, infantry going middle, a Spat BOV thirty going left with a Sneska OT tab. A Paramasava and a Vihor. So he's going with a heavy towards the middle. Probably prowling over here. Although he doesn't have a lot of terrain cover other than the buildings. The infantry I'm expecting to go here and maybe through the forests. These guys are going to take or try to take a position up in Fedor. And again, it's quite a bit of terrain to manage. Now, I like how he immediately deployed his infantry command so that he does not give away that it is in fact an infantry command. Prem S deploying smoke, so he's immediately rushing in forces, trying to get these guys smoked up. Oh, that's the v -hor. He's taking his infantry off the road, although I think in 1v1 you're not that exposed to artillery fire. Spat BOV on the right flank, Tetra with recon infantry inside and just two units of infantry. Yeah, it's a lot of terrain to cover for the points that you have. Now, it is conquest, so you'll probably have quite a bit of income. And we have first contact here. It's definitely US. That was an LAV. Yep, we got a DAP. Well, we had a DAP. That's one down. Cobra is taking fire. So far, no hits. Yep, nailed it. Okay. We're seeing a... Oh, a super heavy here. That's not really something that these guys can deal with. But at least we know where it is. And this means that this area, for the moment, is not really a likely area to take. Now he immediately captured center, puts him at a plus two. Spat BOV with an OT tab 71 rushing forward. And yep, we have infantry inside the buildings. Cannot quite see what he has. Oh, it's just Rifleman 20. No, sorry, Rifleman 90. Rifleman 20, yeah, right. <laughs> Turn up the game volume. Okay, we'll do. Thought the game volume was fine. At least. This is the level that I have it on my normal recordings. Alright. So his Vihor is in a position, but not really in a position to help out against the infantry. Line of sight's blocked here. Oh, this is not looking good. LVTP 7A1s are pushing up. They're getting hit by the boom bar from the uh, Padabranchi on the right. So these guys will get taken down. But other than that, he doesn't have a lot of infantry that can hold them out of bay. There we go. That's the uh, LVTP down. 113. And there is the infantry carrier. I was wondering what exactly deployed the infantry here. So far on the left, he doesn't have any contact yet. Deployed by the branch in the town. More infantry in here. Military engaging riflemen. Artillery striking these guys to make sure that they're not going to be able to fight, at least not as effectively. 
and he immediately follows it up with further infantry, as well as supporting fire from an OT M60. Now, these guys did have building cover, so they're not that much weakened. And unfortunately, the Bradley over here seems to be quite the problem. V-Horse switching back to the left flank to quickly try and deal with the Bradley. Over on the right, we're still dealing with Smalls and the Petabranchi. These guys are going to be... Let's see, are they in range for their actual small weapon? Yep, they're definitely in range for their small, but they're not that numerous. So these guys should be able to take them down. And there's the M1A2. Good to keep an eye on that thing. Vihor now trying to take aim at the uh, Bradley. Already hit it once, at least. Severe damage inflicted, but no kill. Rangers, proletary, riflemen. Yeah, they should be winning this part. As for chat, um, I will not be playing the Ash and Shadows mod anytime soon. Period. I know that people have been asking me forever, but... Just, no. I don't really want to redo all my decks. No thanks. Now, it looks like the Abrams, with further infantry, is on the move. What are these? Yeah. Oh, are those Canadian transports? Yep, Canadian Airborne. And... He got it? He got it. That's the M1A2 down. That should allow his infantry to move around a little bit more freely. Unfortunately, at this point, Blue has captured Dimitri. So he is 64 points up. And he seems to be in control of Boris, at least terrain-wise. But we're not quite sure about what's in the buildings back there. For now, I think he's going to be focusing his attention on the area over here. Specialny are a little bit in over their heads. Hopefully this spat can keep the infantry away. Because I don't think that the Specialny are going to be too well suited for that. I mean, they're really good infantry, but they don't really last well against the autocannon fire coming in here. PvP M80A. Uh, severely panicked. Pretty much combat ineffective. What do we got here? More transports. Seems to be more Canadian transports, if I'm not mistaken. That's one less. I think he's probing on several uh, several areas. He's trying to get, and I'm talking about blue, trying to get Fedor and push towards Elena. And he's definitely not happy with Red 4 holding these buildings over here. So this is going to be a problem. Or at least for blue at the moment. And that grenade launcher, what is that? Yeah. He's holding steady at range, just dropping grenades on top of the infantry. And right now, he doesn't have any AA unit that can help him. I like how these battles are all very, very small skirmishes. It's three or four units engaging three or four other units. It's not like these large 10v10 fights. Now, the Vihor noticed that there's a Harrier coming for him. Unfortunately, the Harrier seems to have eyes on him and nails him with one round, as I think it got him in the side there. Surviving Canadian Airborne are now engaging... No, they're not quite engaging the Specialnys yet. I was expecting that they would be. Yeah, there we go. Oh, artillery is raining down on them. That could be the end of these guys. Wolverine's rushing back. What else have we got going on? Left flank so far, I haven't seen any activity. Now he's bringing in more units to try and control the area, but note how he does not bring in a command vehicle yet. Oh, here we go. Contact left. Ah, uh, you're looking the wrong way. I think that's an LEV-25 scout. Should be a one-shot for the Padabranchi if the thing gets close enough, which is about a kilometer. And it does. 
<laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so now they know that there is infantry in there. But again, the battle seems to be focused much, much more on Boris and Elena. And he has the town. And he definitely has plenty of infantry in the forest. But there's not a whole lot of ways that he can mush, uh, mush, push forward through this napalm screen here. Max is being brought forward. And again, that cobra is harassing his infantry. And also, raining death on his transports. And of course, this is when people start calling at my door. Be right back. Gotta hate how those people just <laughs> interrupt. Anyway. He seems to be no longer harassed by the Cobra. I think the Cobra doesn't have line of sight. But again, there's no AA here to counter. So the Cobra is going to be a problem for probably quite a while. And in the meanwhile, we have bigger issues to concern ourselves with. Bison's pushing forward. Well, one Bison pushing forward. Look at the devastation that these boom bars can bring. Just completely one-shots anything. There you go. Unfortunately, these guys are now not just firing their ATGMs. They're also going to be looking at rangers at close range. And they are not very well suited to dealing with that, considering their hit points. The other Padabranchi. One guy. Um, yeah. I think he's about to lose this town. It's interesting how that happens. You're losing a town to seven rangers. Interesting. The deck that Red is using is Entente General. So he has quite a few options. And now the AA, or lack of it, in the middle is going to be a real problem. The Yatnotki 90 are just not able to take down the Cobra. And it seems that um, I will rage if I lose is all too aware of the fact that he just cannot get shot down. He's aware that blue, no, the, sorry, that uh, red that Afro mentioned just doesn't have too much AA here. There is fortunately one Sav, and it's finally able to take down that Cobra, but the recon Cobra is still operational. This thing still has 10 missiles left, so that should be enough. Oh, you're even sending in a fighter to deal with that? Interesting. We're going to see if Blue counters that. Uh, yeah, he's countering with a Harrier. Gets a hit. Misses the second. And that's all that that thing had. Two short-range infrareds. Now, I gotta say that this is an area where the Bradley absolutely excels. Those long-range tow two, two missiles. Really, really handy on this train. Provided that you have a spotter. And he seems to have one, considering that he was able to spot those vehicles out there. He might, however, have a little bit more to chew off when he's encountering that M84. And Conquerors gets him. Okay. Well, okay, so let's zoom out a little. Control over center seems stable. We just saw one LEV scout come in, and that's about it. Over in Boris... We have infantry, AT infantry, and he's once again recaptured the buildings with further AT infantry in support. The Sava seems to be going back for repairs and more recon is coming in. Over on the right, we last saw one squad of rangers wiping out Podobranchi in the town. And other than that, we don't know exactly what they have in that town. Over on the right, there's one Snezka just to defend, and there is seemingly a lot of infantry so he might be making a push over here from Elena to Fedor and trying to get the enemy out of this sector so he can get a CV into Elena safely 
Are these guys moving? Not, they're not moving. Command infantry coming in. Interesting. Now, I know that he has a mix of command infantry and standard command vehicles. He's opted for command infantry down the middle. I'd say Elena is a bit safer. But apparently he decides to go for the middle area. And we got further units coming in. TH-495s. Conquerors are taking aim, but that's their last missile. And unfortunately the infantry saw it coming, and they got dropped off. They did wipe out 1495. Uh oh. More riflemen coming in. And his infantry here is constantly getting hammered with HE shells. It seems that the enemy knows where his infantry is. And is really, really dissuading from keeping him to push forward. The riflemen are now move making a move on the um, infantry that's currently inside the town. With support. And this is pretty withering machine gun fire. Coming in from the M193s. Sorry, M113s. Canadian rifles are still making a move. Those guys came out of the 495s. Ah, they've taken over a building. Okay. Rage might have a pallet in the back. Yeah, he might. Considering the rate of fire and the sort of bursting fire, I'd say that it could indeed be a paladin. Uh-oh. But a branch are not going to survive that conflict. Alright, so the command infantry has been dropped off and is now moving into a position. That should put him back at a plus one. But there is still plenty of time left for Blue to make a counter move. Look at that, these proletarii are pretty deep into the woods. And yet, they're being spotted. So Blue definitely has a spotter over here, and it could still be the rangers inside this town. Because he's also spotting these transports here. So I think that the rangers are currently providing targeting information. Oh, lovely, another cobra coming in. Well, the AA is ready. Aircraft, is that the Harrier again? Yeah, that's the Harrier again. Board secured, plus one. No more Harrier. And no more Cobra. Look at that guy go. That was effective. MiG-912A comes in, drops Thermo Barracks. On top of the infantry that we are assuming is still inside the town. He's also putting HE bombardments up here. There's the Rangers. And he's moving into the town from the other flank. Nice work. So the rangers can either push forward and get hammered by the infantry and the transports here, or fall back and get hit by the proletariat. That was well done. Ooh, that's expensive. And that could really hurt. Yeah. And that was both an AA gun and a, um, an IFV. And he has a Hornet on patrol. I think he wants to dissuade that fighter that uh, Afro mentioned has. Not really too keen on getting another aircraft shot down, especially if it's an F-117 uh, stealth fighter. Again, he's making a move with a small group of riflemen. And again, a couple of shells come in. Further leading to... Oh, hold on. No, that's a mortar. That rate of fire? That's not sustainable for a paladin. That's a mortar. We got over on the right. Wow, that was fast. What was that? That was an LEV-25 even. And this super heavy? We're going to need a counter to that. 
bad. Because he's currently messing up all the infantry down here. And unfortunately, he has quite a bit of terrain to fall back to. Quite a bit of cover. So the 912A comes in, decides to go after the infantry. That should dissuade Blue 4 from pushing forward with any further units. And here comes the Super Gleb and splashes both missiles. <laughs> what? I thought these things were supposed to be accurate. Jesus. 60% accurate and he misses both. That sucks. Alright. He's taking a bit of rocket bot fire. Super Galeb comes in again. So that's the second Super Galeb, I think. And that did wipe out the Abrams. Okay. No more Super Heavy to deal with. Now there seems to be infantry or something moving around here. And Blue just captured Fedor. Now the position here from Afro Mansion seems to be pretty stable. He has a few infantry units, and since it's only very small unit engagements, it's not like he's going to have to worry about a massive push suddenly coming out of nowhere. Especially considering that there's another 20 Canadian rifles coming down the middle. Hold on, what do we have here? He's probing with an M113. Sorry, M113. You can immediately see how Afro mentioned is repositioning his M60 PB. Trying to counter him. What we got here? That's the Nighthawk again. And it wiped out infantry, I think. More riflemen coming in. It's just... I don't get how he's constantly pushing in one lonely rifleman. One or two with two transports instead of making a bigger push and saving up some forces to do that. Just to get there. Now the fact that these Proletary 90 are getting spotted it's not a good sign. They are inside the woods. Or at least should be. Yep, yeah, there we go. No longer detected. They haven't fired... Well, no, they have fired some machine gun rounds. Ah, there we go. Here's the transports. Canadian built. Bisons. Shouldn't be anything an M84 can't handle. And once these guys are dead, the infantry can start to deal with the Canadian Airborne. Before the Canadian Airborne takes a shot at that M84 with a Carl Gustav. Now, these things have a fair amount of frontal armor, but a Carl Gustav is going to really hurt. Okay, so so far, we still have 18 minutes on the clock. And Afro mentioned has 107 points versus none for I will rage if I lose. Here's the Canadian Airborne. Again, pretty heavily wounded. Elena secured. With a command vehicle, not a command infantry unit this time. So once again, he's at a plus one. Thanks to holding both onto Boris and Elena. And of course, Dimitri and Greg and Fedor are still under blue for control. He's also making a move on the town that is sort of occupied by Blue 4. At least we have some Rifleman 90. And unfortunately for the Rifleman 90, they don't have a lot of fire support. And these guys do. It's not terribly accurate though. And it's only 2 HE. Oh, there. Yep, yeah, they made it to the building, but not before losing one squad. Oh, he's really close with his rangers, and he's forcing his CV to move out. Another Sneska moves forward, but Sneska this close to rangers. I'd say my money's on the rangers. And the Blackhawk coming in. Oh, it's not just one group of rangers. Seems to be reconning in force here. Sneska. That was probably an estimation where his infantry or where the rangers were. So that was a 912 dropping that. There's the Nighthawk again. Uh oh. 
goodbye transport. There goes your fire support. But I think they made a little bit of a dent in the blue four infantry that was inside this town. Now, time for the Bell V30 to get to work. If it can get a good line of sight, that is. Uh, I think the tree line was blocking it. There goes another unit. Another M60PB. Dies to, I think, Canadian Airborne. It was very quick. And there goes a Snezga. Oh, crap. He's going to have to relocate his CV, and he's trying to make a move. I hope that CV is faster than whatever transport is following it. I think it is an LAV-25. Not 100% on that. This infantry better get into position fast. <laughs> oh, he stopped. And, oh yeah, it's a bison. It's not even an autocannon. The gearbox is hit. Heavy damage. He's stunned, so even if he wanted to retreat, he can't. And there he goes. And just as the infantry is about to arrive. Hmm. Now, blue four is at a plus three. There goes the transport. But the damage is done. And it's exacerbated by the fact that blue has actually recaptured or counter-captured center. So blue now has a plus three. He's bringing in a new CV. Two 912As with thermobarics. There is quite a lot of infantry in these woods probably. It's going to be a little tricky to try and find these. Other than just combing through these forests with infantry. So he's going to have to work with the 912s. And just... Well, try to burn the forest down I guess. Hold on. Blue left. Now, note how he picked his positions here. This is likely a position for the CV, as it's close to a road. And this could be another position for the command vehicle, as it is an upslope here. So if it was a vehicle, it could be, or it's most likely to be there and there. If it's command infantry, it could be anywhere. It could also have gone up this ridge here. Uh, it could be somewhere over here. So, if it's command infantry, it's much more difficult to find. If it is a command vehicle, then I'd say that these two positions are fairly certain. And considering that blue is no longer in control of the sector, that seems to be an indicator that either he got it, or at least he motivated the command vehicle to move. Yeah, more Rifleman 90 coming in. Down the middle, he's still holding. Good thing he took out one of those LVTP-7A1s before it was going to be a threat. There's another DAP coming in. Why do you want to have a DAP over here, I wonder? Because it's not like Red is using a lot of helicopters. So he's probably going to buy this thing, or bought this thing, for the twin M30s and the twin miniguns. But he knows that there's an AA gun in there. What's the plan with this DAP? DAP took a little bit of damage there. Oh, there's a Cobra there too. Recaptured. So he's again at a plus one. Goodbye. That's the DAP done. Now the Cobra's pushing through. He's just going to meet the same fate. That's an autocannon. That's not a machine gun. Yep, goodbye. Alright. Small's moving into position. That's going to be really bad news for this infantry group. As they just are going to get wiped out in two or three shots. Especially if they get support from Canadian rifles. But they do have support from the skies. That's a 912, but it missed as the Canadian Airborne... I'm sorry, the Canadian Rifles were just moving out of position. Yeah, that's not really going to work out. Now, center seems secure. I haven't seen blue units in this area for quite a while. And the, the uh, middle... There's not too much going on here, either. 
These L-17s just keep coming in, wiping out one or two helicopters or a plane and then immediately bugging out. Perfect use. Not exactly sure how these guys are still alive. This is an unusual unit to see. I mean, it's not a bad unit. It's a pretty fast AA unit, but... I'm not exactly sure why he's bringing those in, because at the moment I haven't seen any helicopter in center, with the exception of the reconnaissance helo. Do you really need to kill that and send in 70 points to do it? I think that that's a bit... well, a bit much. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That Nighthawk knew exactly what to go for. I think he was guesstimating the position of the command unit as he was probably quite certain that it was not inside the town and this is one of the most likely positions. And don't worry, I'm not actually streaming this game live so he's not stream sniper or something like that. It's just a likely position for the CV to be in. Still... At this point, Afro mentioned has 169 points versus 65, and I will rage if I lose only has 11 minutes to deal with that. Here's the Wolverines. Specialny yet not keep moving forward, not really having too much trouble other than the machine gun that's shooting back at them. And the Wolverines, really fast vehicles, not sticking around to get killed off. More Rifleman 90 coming in. It's just these tiny skirmishes. Oh, hold on. That was a CV. Yep. M151A1CP. Now we can see it. But unless he sends in the super glib, he's not really going to be able to kill it. Because there's no ATGM, no tank, nothing over here. What do we have here? Another Cobra trying to flank and probably get to the command vehicle, which he knows where it is. It was probably lit up for long enough for Blue to mark the position. So if we suddenly see this thing explode thanks to a Nighthawk strike, then we know how exactly that happened. I'm not sure if he was aware that the CV got spotted. Look at the CV. <laughs> Just moving through the open. Who cares? Well, the Sneska cares, that's who. Snaska's having none of that. And the Super Galab comes in and finishes it off. But a Brunchy versus Rifleman. Not really good day for the Rifleman. He's still at a plus one. 179 points. There's the Nighthawk. As expected, he noted the position. And he's going directly on top of the command vehicle. There you go. No more plus one for Red 4. Follows up with a Hornet in case that... Um, Afro mentioned sends in a fighter to deal with the command or with the, um, the Nighthawk. Tries to catch that. Spawns in a new command vehicle. He's probably not going to want to park it over there, but just sending it in and directing it as it comes in. Now he's still in a very, very solid position here, Afro mentioned. It's Blue's turn to make a move. And it's not for lack of trying, he's been probing the lines here and almost got through, actually counter-capped it. He has been making good progress on Boris. And he did have these towns at some point, and then Afro mentioned recaptured those. And he actually had rangers inside this town spotting all the infantry and support units that were in here. And then he unfortunately lost that position too. So Afro mentioned looks to be... Very, very solid here. Unless something goes terribly, terribly wrong. I don't think that there's going to be too much that can threaten his position. Another Hornet comes in. What are you trying to kill? And then 912? Oh dear. So much for the 912. The Hornet did take a missile. But doesn't really matter. Oh, the CV arrived. He's fast. Oh, he's going to park it in the town. 
I see. There you go. And once again, he's back at a plus one. Now let's speed it up a little, because I think that there's not going to be too much happening. Oh, look at that, he's even pushing out. He's setting up a further defensive line. Oh, another super heavy too. Super Galep tries to come in and deal with it. Unfortunately, the M1A2 gets back inside the smokescreen and just disappears. They did manage to nail a longbow, I think. Yeah, there's the longbow crashing. Uh, back to wind it. There we go. Yep, that M1A2 is still up here. He did lose his Super Galeb. But the M1A2 seems to have been damaged severely and is not really in a state to pick any fights. It's not that there's too much that can actually pose a threat to the M1A2. A special at Notki with an RPG-26 should be able to take it out with one shot. Well, no, they'll do one damage, I think. Because it has more than 20 frontal armor. So yeah, they will definitely do some damage, but not enough. Contact left. Just rifleman holding this town. Then again, there's not a whole lot that's going to be happening. It's just these small infantry skirmishes. Look at that. That's ballsy. I think he's going to try and get rid of the rifleman over here and then park his command vehicle out there. Where, if he can pull that off... He's going to be able to neutralize another plus two, so he should be at a plus three. But considering that the game only lasts for another two minutes, I don't think that he's going to be getting away with it. But that is ballsy. Scouting with a CV. We did see a couple of riflemen disappear into these woods here. He's moving into position, sort of. Other than that, there's just nothing on the blue or the the map for blue. It's just completely quiet. Tatra moving forward, completely unfazed by the fact that there's napalm on the right flank. There's the riflemen. Okay, so we know where the riflemen are, or at least some of them. And the Hera just flies over here, doesn't get shot at, so there's a better than average chance that the rifleman over here somehow retreated, and I'm not exactly sure where to, because otherwise they would be shooting at the helicopter as it flies by. Look at this! He's just able to scout out the whole flank. I think Blue has nothing here. Yeah, command vehicle. But other than that, is desolated. There we go. Plus three. So if he now captures it, it's plus five. But then again, the game is decided. 244 versus 65. The Hera is on its way to try and do the same thing to Gregory. And I think that I Will Rage If I Lose is not going to be waiting for that. So yeah. This game is done. Well played, Afro mentioned. Well played. Total defeat for I Will Rage If I Lose. I wonder if he did. Anyway, 2,000 kills and 3,500 losses. So he just lost a lot more forces. I'm not exactly 100% why, but I think that his... La well, sort of lack of combined arms... And also, I didn't really see any use of smoke as he was pushing his infantry forward. Those two factors could have been a problem for him. Now, let's see. Conquers doing some damage. The Sava. Yeah, that Cobra was such an annoyance. Fihor taking out some units. Oh, an M202 Bradley. Oh, sorry. I thought it was an M3A2. An M2A2? Better Branchy, Proletary, M1A2. Yeah, these Super Galabs were doing some work. 
Look at these guys go. Canadian Airborne, Riflemen, more Canadian Airborne, an LEV, more Riflemen, and two transports. Impressive work. Pedro Branchi 90. <laughs> all these vehicles, all the infantry, even a Maxis. Never underestimate a boom bar. Because those things are going to mess you up. M84, taking out some transports. Conquers M, taking out two transports. Both of these are quite dangerous if they get too close, especially the 7A1. L17K, this was one of his fighters. Took out a Harrier, two Cobras, a Longbow, and a Hornet. That's an impressive performance for a vehicle or for an airplane that's really not that expensive. 912s. I'm not expecting generally to see a lot of kills from the 912s because they, I think, do most of their damage thanks to the napalm, which erupts after the HE bombs actually detonate. But he did to kill the TACOM. So when those aircraft were striking the positions where I thought the CV was, he actually nailed the command infantry that moved up into a position there. What? <laughs> Hold on. He killed a Chinook with a command infantry, I think? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Impressive. All right. That was really well played. I like those small skirmishes that we saw between Afro mentioned and I will rage if I lose. Well played. Anyway, that concludes this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys who were here for the live stream to respond on chat. And if you have a replay that you think I should see, then by all means, please send it in through the link down in the description. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon for more videos.